Carl. What have you done? Think anyone will notice? Mr. Carl Jackson. Carl Jackson was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. After the sudden death of his mother at the age of 11, he moved between L.A. and Orlando, Florida, trying to find his way in life. So I'm clearly a Carl Jackson fan. Carl Jackson. Carl Jackson. Carl Jackson. Although he was introduced to hard work, faith, and family values, as a struggling teen, he wandered down the path of least resistance, finding himself jailed twice. By the grace of God, he attended an evangelical church and found that there was a better way and accepted Jesus Christ as his savior. There's just no fake stuff about Carl Jackson. Now on the Salem Podcast Network, Carl has launched on a journey to help people of all races and backgrounds to discover facts of America's true past, as well as realize the benefits of utilizing their God-given gifts and talents, which far outweigh any benefit from a government subsidy or program. It's dangerous out here. Let's roll, Carl. Can't go fast. Redeemed rehabilitated and real entertaining. This is the Carl Jackson Podcast. All right, welcome to the Carl Jackson Podcast, Carl Jackson Show Podcast. Uh, with me or joining me today is Dr. James Carafano, foreign policy expert, national security advisor for the Heritage Foundation, a vice president of the Heritage Foundation, and a veteran, 25-year veteran, uh, Dr. James Carafano, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you being on. You're on. You're at CPAC. Yeah, it's a bit bit gorilla here, man. We're doing this <laughs> on the phone, and uh, the, the masses are assembling here. It's it's great. It's um, uh, I, look, I think it's really inspiring. I mean, if if you look at the parade going up, um, the the depth of the conservative movement and the leadership, you know, from DeSantis to, you know, Ted Cruz and it just on and on and on. It, it's really impressive. I, I think, I think conservatives really have something to offer about what do we need to keep Americans free and safe and prosperous and people who, who, who are going to do three for three, right? They're not going to accept two out of three. And I think if you contrast that with what, Biden and Obama have offered, which is which is we have a political agenda to transform America and where that bumps up against America's interests, then we have to figure out how to keep our agenda going. And I, I think we've seen that on energy policy, economic policy. Certainly we have, now we've seen on foreign policy that when they when they hit a crisis or a bump in the road, it's not about what do we do to take care of Americans? It's about what do we do to get our agenda to transform America back on track? And this, I think, is is just shows that there is a deep, a deep bench of leaders that want to move America in the right direction. So it's 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 really inspiring. You know, it, uh, James, I was there last night and I got to tell you or yesterday and, and through last night. And, you know, what's so exciting? And I saw this last year. Last year was the first time I attended CPAC. Uh, obviously this year it's right in town second year uh, and I'll be back I'm not there today but I will be back uh, over the weekend um, and I got to tell you one of the things that's so inspiring to me is how many young people are there uh, and I was speaking to the vice chairman of uh, CPAC yesterday and his name escapes me right now uh, but anyway he was just talking about how these young people are inspired because they have purpose, meaning they're motivated to get involved. They're motivated to secure their own safety, their own freedom. Uh, and that's just so inspiring. I, I, I get concerned about where America seems to be tracking. But I must admit, when I go to when I went to CPAC yesterday, it, it, it lifted me a bit, to be to be honest with you, because I look and, you know, I'm I'm, I'm in my I'm 44 so I, I look at these younger kids and I'm, I'm like, thank God there are some uh, there's a younger generation that's going to continue to fight. And, and, it's not just, and it makes me makes me feel good. And it's not just America. I look, I'm just back from from Budapest um, hmm. where I was there literally left right before the, the shots started being fired. But um, wow, there's the same thing over there. There are multi generational, but. I mean, there's the older generation that remember what it was like to live under communism and never want to do that again. But there's also a young generation that cares about family and the value of work and the, and the, and the value of God and religion in the public place and, and, the, and the value of democracy and the individual vote. And it is inspiring. Um, it's, 
you know, I, I, I think we've reached peak woke in the world. I mean, I think even people that, yeah, yeah had, I agree. You know, had this kind of embracing of the left have realized that that that's that is not the way to a, a, a healthy and a happy future. Um, you know, certainly many Europeans, when they see what's going on today in Ukraine, and they see their their own freedom and democracy at risk, they see that. Uh, and I think that. I, and I think that's really important. It's the only thing that gives me optimism because certainly nothing our government is doing, nothing the administration is doing you know, domestically in foreign policy are the kinds of things to do that are going to keep Americans, build better communities, keep us safe, allow people to prosper, allow individuals to prosper. Um, and, and, uh, and I think there is a big opportunity here to push back. And, and the, you know, tragedy, it, honestly, if America had woken up even just two years ago, tragedies yeah. like Ukraine would not be happening. You know what? And, and that's a that's a great segue, James. And that's a, exactly what I want to get into. I, I, I have to admit to you um, that I was really literally I had to contain myself yesterday when I was filling in. Uh, for Elder, I had uh, so much show prep and uh, even other stories that I wanted to touch on. Obviously, uh, Ukraine, Russia, the uh, Russia attacking Ukraine is the the uh, the biggest story uh, by far. But I figured I'd touch on it in the the first hour and and kind of move on and just give updates. But the updates were coming so frequently, I couldn't do that. Uh, but beyond that, uh, just to see some pictures and some video rolling out, and I got to be honest with you, it. It not only broke my heart to imagine what some uh, innocents are experiencing uh, in Ukraine, but for the first time, I I, I got to be real with you. I, I, it's like I felt it was palpable that America is on the decline. Like I, I like I never felt it that strongly, James. Well, I, I got to tell you, um, you know, just being there, it almost felt like 1939. I mean. You know, wow. people wow. were waiting for something to happen. They weren't sure what. Uh, I, now I know how those people felt really on the eve of World War II. And, and it is important because, you know, there are no do-overs in history. What's happening in Ukraine is happening. But this is so much bigger than Ukraine. This, re this really yes. directly will touch us. I mean, Putin is not just interested in Ukraine. He wants to reabsorb the post-Soviet states, have dictatorial control over Central Europe, have pushed the United States out of NATO, have um, NATO dissolve, have an isolated and alone America, which is exactly what the Chinese wants. I mean, I mean, this Putin is doing China's work for him. They they want a weakened and divided Europe and an America isolated. And at some point, this will come right back to us. And if we don't stop sleepwalking and wake up and deal with it, um, we are we are in deep trouble. And the the, it, what's maddening to me is the way to deal with Putin is so frustratingly clear and obvious. I mean, he really only has two things that threaten us. One, he has a, a large, powerful military, and he sells a lot of energy. And the solution is simple. If, if we have peace through strength, if we can defend ourselves, and, and of course, Biden isn't even close to that. He, he, he didn't even right. introduce budget, budgets that covered the cost of inflation. But if, if we can defend ourselves... If we have energy independence, then Putin doesn't matter. He, he can't touch us. He can't touch our friends. Uh, these are th and, and ironically, these are things that are actually good for America and good for the American people. And we have an administration that has no interest in any of them. They're still talking about sanctions. You know, I, you know, this is actually ironic because they always criticize Trump for sanctions. Oh, all, all Trump. <laughs> right. Right. And then a crisis happens. And the only thing they have is sanctions and they don't even know how yeah. to use them. I mean, Donald Trump understood that sanctions are not there to deter people. They are not there to punish them because these yahoos can always find ways to make money. They're there to deprive right. the adversary of resources so they have less resources yeah. to do bad stuff. with. But, yeah. Yeah, that is. I, I mean, it's so it, it, it's like these people want to fundamentally destroy America, but they're inept at doing it. I want to ask you some specific questions because I do want to I, 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 I want to show a connection for those of you that are listening. I know there's a lot of people that uh, 
I, listen, I'm not I, I I'm not an intervention of uh, interventionists or interventionists or interventionalists. I don't even know how I, I'm not like an isolationist reading in other countries. We get that. Right. Yeah. But I'm not an isolationist. Right. And I think that this is I, I, I think this is a threat. I, I really do think what's happening in Europe is is a threat. And I want to try to if you will, James, try to help me connect sure. the dots, not just here. But with uh, with Ty- uh, Taiwan and China. But first, let me let me focus on Ukraine for a second. Uh, I was reading through an article that talks about how uh, the how the this conflict could expand to the Baltic states. Talk about the implication of that if that were to occur. Well, I think so. There's a question of, and you're right. This is just the crisis before the next crisis. If Putin isn't stopped right. here, he's just going to march on. So the, the most obvious targets are actually the countries that are not in NATO now, right? So Georgia, Moldova, the Balkans. But at some point, his goal is to challenge Article 5. That's the Collective Defense Treaty and, and attack a NATO country and have NATO do nothing. And, and that will actually be the end of NATO and it will crumble. So the question is, is does he move on to the Moldovas and the Georgias and the Balkans or does he take a shot at a at a at a at a NATO ally like in in the Balkans? The, these very small countries, very difficult, uh, uh, easily for the Russians to isolate, uh, and 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 we don't know. And this to me is the real problem here. You know, I was in the military for twenty five years. Um, the one situation you never wanted to be in was where you were just sitting there waiting for the enemy to do something and reacting to that. Right. It's the worst right. possible thing. It's like sitting behind the Maginot line, waiting for Hitler to decide when to start the war. You you always, where you can, you want to force the enemy to react to you, not the other way around. So here we are. Punch the bully first. Right. So here we are sitting, waiting to see, well, what will Putin do next? And we'll see, well, what will China do next? What will they do in Taiwan? And and we're just reactive. And Trump never did this, right? Trump, Trump right. is the, and, and to your point, you know, Trump was not an isolation. It's not even close. He was not, I want to go out and conquer ch- countries and do regime change and do nation building. He was, I am just here to protect America and his interests. And the way he did that was he leaned forward and he demonstrated a willingness to defend the interests. And then the enemies had to respond, to, react to him, not the other way around. It, it was very powerful and very effective. And people say, well, you know, what, what happened in Ukraine was inevitable and, you know, Biden did the best he could. Well, the reality is, is, Putin has wanted to do this since easily 2014. He's wanted to do this. He did nothing under Donald Trump. He stopped for four years. And the reason why he stopped is very simple. He was afraid of Trump and what Trump would do. Yeah, it's so amazing where we are today. The second question. All right, so Finland and Sweden. Oh, you know what? A lot of people have been saying, or I've been hearing, well, why... Why doesn't NATO just say Ukraine isn't welcome? They're not going to be allowed into NATO. This would stop Putin. Is there is there truth no. to that? In your opinion, is it too late? For no, that? look, it's What's... nonsense. First of all, um, okay, that Putin doesn't care about that. So you'd be giving him something that's irrelevant, and and you'd okay. also be demonstrating you're afraid of Putin. And the other thing, which is true, mm. which nobody really talks about, is Ukraine wanted to come into NATO and NATO wanted to do that, but it wasn't eligible because in the NATO treaty, if, you, if part of your country is occupied, you, you can't get into NATO and to get into NATO, every country would have to agree. So th- there was no prospects that Ukraine was going to join NATO anytime soon. So, so that was okay. a pretext right. for invading and, and just saying, okay, we, 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 Ukraine won't join NATO. That wouldn't stop Putin. People have to remember Putin has lied every step of the way. Everything he said is, it was just an exercise. I'm not going to invade. I don't know what people are talking about. You know, I am now I am invading, but I am doing it to liberate the Ukrainians. I'm stopping a, I mean, now all, <laughs> is you know, everything is a lie. So I don't know why people say, well, if Putin says if we just agreed not to join NATO, then it wouldn't be a problem. Right. Well, we know that's a lie. I, I don't know why people even repeat that. Putin himself has said what he wants. What he wants is he wants those states. He wants to control Central Europe. He wants NATO to dissolve. He wants the United States to withdraw. He wants to share control of the world with China. That's what he wants. Wow. It's pretty amazing. I mean, this is uh, 
And again, I'm, 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 ah, uh, man, I, I'm just looking at the ramifications of this, and I'm like, how can you not be concerned? If Finland and Sweden wanted to join NATO, sh should we allow them? It, well, would, yeah, would, I mean, this is actually help? kind of the, you know, Sweden. Uh, so Norway's in NATO, Finland and Sweden are not, and and the reality is, is if you look at the geography there, that's that's NATO's northern flank. If the Russians attacked Finland and Sweden and they asked for help, we'd have to defend them anyway, because without them, we couldn't hold the northern flank. So if they wanted to join NATO, wow. of course, we should let them, because the reality is, is we're and, and the Russians know this. It doesn't matter if they join NATO or not. The Russians know that that Sweden and Finland and NATO are going to fight together anyway if they attack them. It's just the reality. OK, OK. That makes hey, perfect I, sense. All right, I've got China. another interview i got to go, go to ahead. in like a minute. Okay. But, All right. All right, James, listen, I, I, I appreciate the time that we have uh, had with you. I'll, I'll continue on the best I can without your expertise, but I appreciate you joining us yeah, while hey, you could. Have fun at CPAC. Right, I'll look Maybe for I'll you, tomorrow. you tomorrow. It'd be great. All right. See you all right. You bye take bye. care. We appreciate that time with James Carafano. I'm not necessarily the expert on this stuff, but I still have more to talk about, but I think we got the bigger questions out of the way. He's at CPAC. It is buzzing there. It is crazy there. Uh, he's probably going to be backed up interview after interview. But nonetheless, thank you for joining us on the Carl Jackson Show podcast. So let me just kind of take off where I left off, where we left off, James Carafano and I. But it is a good idea for Finland and Sweden uh, to join NATO. Uh, it would be good for us to invite them in, but regardless, you heard what he uh, were, uh, you heard what he said because of uh, since they're part of the northern flank. If they're attacked, NATO would defend them anyway, and Putin is well aware of this. So uh, Putin has just been sitting back, seeing how people will react, uh, lying his teeth off, and I think just just literally making decisions day by day. Hey, OK, they're not reacting to this. I'm going to do, you know, I, I'm going to go here. I'm going to do this. Ultimately, it's been his goal uh, to it seems to be his goal to rule the world with China. I'll get into China shortly because I do think uh, the U.S., we really need to deter China from invading Taiwan. There's already been some squirmishes, if you will. Uh, thank God uh, Taiwan was able to chase some fighter uh, jets away. The other day from uh, China. Uh, but this is, listen, I, I, I got to be completely honest with you. This is very disconcerting. I, I, I've i never felt like America was in decline in the way that I feel it today. Now, I do think that America could come back. I do think that we have to fight, build up our military, fight domestically, get the right people in office. We got a lot of cleaning up to do. There's no doubt about it. But I do think that America could be restored uh, to this, uh, to 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 be the, the the shining city on a hill. A third question that comes to mind: China may come to Russia's aid in some form or view um, as the conflict uh, uh, um, brings about an opportunity to attack Taiwan. That's what we were talking about. I think that obviously that is coming to fruition. I'm going to delve into that more deeply in, in in just a sec. But all of these things have ramifications. Once you mess with freedom, once you have a dictatorial nation that has nuclear power and they decide to bully an innocent nation, uh, obviously it, it isn't our fight uh, uh, fight per se, but it's a threat to freedom. There, it, it, there is a threat to freedom. When you have innocents being attacked for no particular reason except a dictator wants to, to return to the days of old, to old Russia, uh, it, 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 it's a concern. It's a concern. You think about the Budapest Memorandum. We told them uh, the UK, we did in Russia, if they would disarm their nuclear weapons, that we would protect them. We haven't kept our word with that. You had Trump that gave uh, the uh, Ukrainians uh, javelin missiles and some weaponry to be able to defend, to defend themselves. Thank God Biden hasn't done that. Well, at least more uh, recently. I, 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 he started uh, to do that, but it wasn't enough. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Obama that gave them blankets and, and MREs, whoop-de-doo. Well, when it came to the Croatians or Crimea, I'm sorry, 
when uh, when when um, Putin decided uh, to 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 uh, annex uh, Crimea. And then there's a actually I'm reading from a column from the Federalist has Putin miscalculated his ability to to take Ukraine swiftly. And I hope he has. Uh, there are volunteer units from Poland, the Baltic nations and beyond that may seek to join uh, the effort against uh, Russia. And, and and I hope they will. I hope they will. I think this will impact the United States. Obviously, it'll it'll impact the, the, the United States as far as energy is concerned, because. We closed down the XL pipeline, we embolden, uh, we embolden Vladimir Putin. He doesn't care about sanctions right now. He's too far. He's too, uh, uh, you know, he's too deep in this. I mean, eventually, obviously, seizing uh, bank assets and stuff like that will will slow him down. But for now, if he takes over parts of Ukraine, what do you think the United States is going to do? What do you think our European allies are going to do? If the fighting were to cease, I think they just sit, they just sit back and, oh, thank God he stopped. But he's accomplished his goal of taking Ukraine. Uh, you know, if. If he succeeds, I think it proves that NATO is overwhelmingly worthless. It, it, it's a sad state of affairs. And then, lastly, a concern, if the Zelensky or some, uh, lastly, the, 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 the concern as to whether or not Putin may have moved too swiftly, or, or I shouldn't say he moved too swiftly. Let me make sure that I word this right for the viewing audience. Maybe Putin underestimated Ukraine, and I hope he did. The last indication may be, or what Putin could suffer for, if Zelensky doesn't fall. And by the way, he is the number one target. He said that he has intelligence, and it totally makes sense, that Putin wants to kill him, wants to kill his family. Uh, and Putin wants to put a puppet in Ukraine uh, that'll be his, where he can be the puppet master. He wants to set up his own government, basically, in Ukraine. This guy, remember, was a comedian that wanted to, uh, he ran, it, it was kind of the Trump phenomena, if you will, that hit globally. It was like, uh, uh, make make Ukraine, uh, MUGA, I guess, make Ukraine great again. This was a guy that kind of ran on an anti-corruption platform. You may recall, remember the, uh, the fake impeachment, uh, Trump's, what Trump called the perfect call with Ukraine and and by perfect, it, it was a perfectly nice and perfectly normal call. He just congratulated him on his uh, 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 on his victory. I mean, people wanted uh, they didn't want uh, corruption. This guy was an anti-corruption leader. Ukraine isn't the U.S. We understand that they don't necessarily have our freedom type values. We get that. Uh, but the bottom line is Trump congratulated him. You know, and then here comes a fake Ukraine impeachment hoax, even though we all had the transcripts. It was pretty insane. But if if Zelensky's government survives. And then he maintains support uh, from his people, if they do survive, uh, Putin is going to look really bad. And perhaps Russians, perhaps Russians that have been fighting for Putin will get tired of Putin. Something to uh, something to consider. I'm not sure where I there, there's two places that I can that I can go. Um, let, let me let me just go here really quick. Hopefully I've pulled this article up so I don't have to search. All right. Good. I did. This is from the Daily Wire. And I and, and actually I read another column the other day uh, from another. I think it was a think tank. I can't recall which, to be honest. Uh, but I want to talk to you about Biden and how Biden is says uh, Biden says that we have to basically necessarily go through. We're going to experience some pain uh, for the sake of freedom, basically, uh, with everything that's happening with the Russia attack on Ukraine. So we're going to have to experience some pain. Let me just read through this column. Hat tip, Daily Wire. As gas prices skyrocket, the Biden administration announced this week that they're indefinitely delaying new oil and gas drilling on federal land and other energy-related actions following a federal court ruling that blocks the administration from using their steep, what they call the social cost of carbon, social cost of carbon estimate. This is really important because the Biden administration is lying to you. While it, Biden is claiming 
that they're doing everything they can to stop and or deter Putin. But they're not really. Because the only way to stop Putin, the only way to stop his march, really emphatically stop him in his tracks, is for us to be energy independent again. And then you make him a weakling. No one in Europe is dependent on him if we're drilling and we can sell our oil uh, to our European allies. Uh, it, 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 it's insane. So here you have Biden saying he wants to deter Putin. Meanwhile, he's emboldening Putin because he's stopping America's ability to drill and to frack on U.S. lands, federal lands anyway. So the U.S. District Judge uh, James Kane of the Western District of Louisiana blocked federal agencies from using an estimate known as the social cost of carbon uh, to assess pollution from carbon emissions by energy production and other industrial sources. Uh, the decision blocked the Biden administration from using a higher estimate for the damage that each additional ton of greenhouse gas pollution causes society. Uh, Joe Biden, on his first day in office, remember, restored the climate cost estimate to about $51 per ton of carbon dioxide emissions after Trump had reduced the figure to $7 or less per ton. And Trump's estimate only included damages that were felt in the U.S. versus the global uh, 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 the global harm previously used by Barack Obama. Um. Even the uh, Wyoming Senator John Barrasso slammed the Biden administration for continuing to, quote, defy the courts and the law, unquote, by halting oil drilling on public um, on, on public lands. So even in the face of a global energy crisis, Barrasso says, uh, historic inflation and skyrocketing gasoline prices, the Biden administration continues to crush U.S. energy uh, production. Right now, oil prices topped $100 a barrel, according to this article from Daily Wire, for the first time in eight years on Thursday. Actually, that's according to the Wall Street Journal, adding that the commodity is set to squeeze American households, push up inflation, dent the economic recovery, and create a new headache for the Federal Reserve as it moves to raise interest rates. So if you're, you're feeling pain, Biden is talking about that we're going to feel some type of pain because we have to sacrifice for freedom. Meanwhile, he's making us slaves to Russia. The guy is a liar. The guy is an idiot. I, I, I got to be honest. I feel like he's just as evil as, as Putin. Because he's allowing this to happen. No, it isn't our fight. But we could damage Putin simply by taking care of ourselves. And we're not doing it. It makes no sense. We have to sacrifice for free. No, we don't need to sacrifice. You want to stop looking like a fool on the world stage? Open up the Keystone XL pipeline. It's really simple. We are suffering unnecessarily so because of this man in the White House. This I, I, this evil man. I I, I think Biden is evil. I I I can't get around it. I know he's see now. I know he's not completely there. I know there's some people pulling the puppet strings, uh, but his wife Jill. And he still have to abide by, by that, right? He is technically the most powerful guy in the U, in, in the world. Although that's that's coming into serious question. So I just think that he's evil. There's no way uh, you, you you're begging Americans to sacrifice for the sake of freedom while you're while you're intentionally destroying the economy. You're intentionally destroying the middle class. You're intentionally destroying the backbone of American society. Brent crude, going back to the article, uh, Brent crude, the international oil benchmark, traded above $100 per barrel. That was uh, yesterday morning. Uh, the futures for West Texas Intermediate, the main grade of U.S. crude, topped $96 per barrel. That was late Wednesday. That put them up 28% this year, 52% over the past 12 months months. The benchmark, which uh, briefly had a value of less than zero after crashing in the spring of 2020 uh, as the uh, pandemic unfolded, is now at its highest level since 2014. 
Ironically, that was when Putin decided to uh, uh, to annex Crimea from Ukraine. It, uh, it's pretty astounding, uh, astonishing. Biden gave his speech on Wednesday, telling Americans to buckle up uh, for coming economic hardship, namely high gas prices, likely the result from sanctions against Russia. And again, those, it, it, it isn't because of the sanctions on Russia. We could open up the Keystone XL pipeline. Biden and the Democrats and these left wing nut jobs in the green energy movement uh, can, could could uh, could admit that they were wrong. So we're trying to clean the environment, clean the air. But we're allowing Putin to do whatever the heck he wants to do. We're allowing China to do whatever the heck they want to do. Uh, but we uh, we're supposedly these morally superior people because we're not doing the drilling and the fracking. What is it? What difference does it make if it's done in Russia or the U.S.? If you're really concerned about global warming. These people are complete and utter frauds and they're evil. They know what they're doing. This guy is systematically destroying the United States of America. This article goes on to say, as we respond, or this is Biden and I quote, as we respond, my administration is using every tool at our disposal to protect American businesses and consumer from rising prices at the pump. No, he is not. He is doing the exact opposite. We, a year ago, one year ago, gas was at least 50 percent less. It, that, that's in, impacting all levels of society. It's not going to hurt the wealthy man. It's not going to hurt the guy that has to pay capital gains taxes on a, a major, you know, stock shares or what have you. It's going to hurt the little guy who's living paycheck to paycheck or has barely enough saved in the bank or just enough saved to to maybe maybe handle expenses for a week or two, maybe a month. This guy's evil. Biden goes on to say the little evil wannabe despot in the house, uh, White House. He said, uh, as I said last week, defending freedom will have costs for us as well. And here at home, we need to be honest about that. But he's not defending freedom. He's not defending freedom. He's standing by as the innocents in Ukraine are being slaughtered in some cases by Putin. But I, 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 I'm so thankful because I, I'm hoping as this draws out, the longer Ukraine can withstand the barrage of, of, of Putin's attack, the more likely it is that they'll survive. Perhaps the more likely it is that Zelovsky will remain in office. This will be devastating. This will be devastating to Putin. And hopefully so. Biden goes on to say, but as we will do, but as we do this, I'm going to take robust, robust action to make sure the pain of our sanctions is, uh, uh, is targeted at the Russian economy, not ours. Uh, that's impossible. That's impossible. So he's sanctioning Russia. That's one issue. Meanwhile, he's stopping drilling, uh, drilling for oil on federal lands. Uh, it, it, it's insane. He says we are closely monitor, monitoring energy supplies for any disruption. Um, I guess they should monitor to the, the Keystone XL pipeline. They'll find a major disruption there. I'm sure he's probably forgotten about it. We're executing a plan in coordination with major oil producing consumers and producers toward a collective investment to secure stability and global energy supplies. Notice that word collective. Notice that word collective. It's it, I mean, we're really living in scary times. I want to I want to take you to uh, an, another column. How do we deter China? Because obviously what happens is with with tyranny on the march. The world is watching. I've been saying this for some time now, but the world is watching. Tyranny is on the march. How do we deter China? Should the United States de deter China? I'm not an interventionist. I couldn't get the word out of my mouth earlier. I'm not an isolationist. But I do believe these people, uh, these these um, minor incursions, let's say, that are happening across the globe right now, that uh, they're going to impact the United States. They're going to impact. Now, speaking of Taiwan and China, there was a great article written on the 
Federalist how the United States needs to start deterring China from taking over Taiwan. The first question is, well, why uh, do we need to bother? And I think this is, I think this is, uh, this is extremely important because what China is trying to do is kind of take over, actually not, not kind of, they're trying to take over America without firing a shot and they're doing a great job. Right now, they have major influence over our universities, major influence, uh, uh, you know, over over our major corporations. Um, And they have major influence even over sports and entertainment. So what China is trying to do, I must admit, is brilliant, but scary. They're attempting to bring America down to size by destroying or minimizing our influence in the world and causing theirs to rise. And it, I got to admit, it's a brilliant strategy. And too many American presidents have been dumb enough to fall for it. Too many left-wing radicals and, 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 and Democrats right now are, are, are fundamentally destroying America. And it's going to hurt all of us. It's not going to hurt one one party over the other, one sex over the other, the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated, it's going to hurt America. If China wants to be able, they want the power, they want the manufacturers that Taiwan has and the ability, capability to be able to supply these software chips around the world. Taiwan, why they don't do their own? Uh, Because they're a communist party. They like stealing other people's ideas and making them their their own. That's what they do. They're evil. They're corrupt. They'll just take, they don't care about human life. They don't care about ingenuity. They don't care about entrepreneurship. They obviously don't care about Taiwan's sovereignty. The same like Putin didn't care about Ukraine's sovereignty, international law. That makes no matter to despots. They don't care about that stuff. If they can get control of Taiwan, Right now, we are starting to build chips within the United States, but we don't control the market. And you have a lot of these major corporations that are, uh, you know, that have been kissing China's butt. And if China were to take Taiwan, they will continue to do so and buy chips from China because China would be even more dominant. They've taken over Hong Kong. They've taken over Taiwan. So this article goes on to say some of the ways that we can. Um deter them. One, let me just read this. I talked about this, but let me just read through this column because it's pretty cool. China's growing influence over U.S. culture, sports, and big business leaders will not simply fizzle out on its own. Stopping Chinese domination will require determined U.S. leadership to do uh, to do what exactly? The columnist asked to untangle our country's financial interdependence to create significant disincentives for Americans to bend to the CCP's preferences and demands did you ever think that you would have americans that have become successful in america and they wanted to branch out globally that would be willing to cut america down to size uh, honestly these anti-american businesses in my opinion uh need to be need to be punished we need to uh create some major disincentives for them to be friendly with china if they're going to do business within the united states of america it needs to happen uh, quick um when republicans uh, get in to the best of our ability we're gonna have to force biden's hand to curtail uh some of this nonsense um and uh, think about this we're relying on china to we're we're relying on far too much chinese manufacturing may i mean to search for anything that says made in america is becoming increasingly difficult to find products made in china is way too easy. That should not be the case in the United States of America. It makes no sense. So we have to reshore our critical manufacturing. We have to stop this de-industrialization of the United States of America. And we have to reassert U.S. sovereignty and promote and defend our way of life. Um, So China's influence is due to their size of military. They're, They're their military has become huge, and and unfortunately, we're lagging behind. Uh, this absolutely has to change. Uh, this has to change our ability um, 
our ability to be to be strong, our ability to deter enemies. We don't have to go around and attack the world. We don't have to do that. Uh, but if we're strong, uh, we can. It's it's Reagan's old mantra: peace through strength. Right? It works. Trump used the same philosophy. It works. Peace through strength. Let's build up our military. Let's make it where no one wants to mess with us. Let's make it where our influence, because we're a freedom-loving people, our influence is bigger than a communist uh, country. Um, just real quick, where Taiwan fits into China's plan. And this brings us to the question of Taiwan. Unifying the vibrant, di- democratic, and capitalist Taiwanese island to mainland communist China is the CCP's highest priority. China has been harassing Taiwan incessantly, trying to intimidate and cause uh, a despair to its population of 24 million who have repeatedly uh, remained autonomous and free. Reasonable and decent people agree that communist China, uh, chi- China's ongoing assault against Taiwan is unjust and that China is the aggressor against the democratic island that just wants to be left alone. But the first step for the CCP to reestablish its hegemony over Eurasia is to overturn the status quo and to absorb Taiwan, including uh, by military force. Uh, Administrative uh, Administrator Phil Davidson, in his outgoing congressional testimony as head of the Indo-Pacific Command uh, last spring, said that China would invade Taiwan in six years. Uh, analysts now refer to this ominous prediction as the Davidson window. So the debate over whether the U.S. should be concerned over Taiwan's fate would be more constructive if people knew that successfully deterring Chinese aggression against Taiwan is possible. It is. Uh, This is not to suggest the steps necessary to deter Chinese aggression are easy. They are not. But the steps are eminently doable. um, And defeatism is unwarranted. Uh, We have to we have to deter China. Someone's going to rule the world. I know that sounds like a movie spoof or something. Someone is going to rule the world. Someone is going to influence the world. Let me put it that way. Would we rather the United States, a freedom-loving country, and don't give me this, well, America is just as evil as No, no. We don't put people in, in camps um, like the Uyghurs, force them into uh, slave-type labor, all of these lefties talking about this place is systemically racist, and commit genocide. Well, the left does that with babies, but uh, our government, well, we, we do help fund it. Okay. We got some issues with abortion, but we don't take male, female slaves, put them in concentration camps, force them into labor and try to kill off an entire group of people by force, by force. We do not do that. Sadly, abortion is voluntary uh, in in, in this country, but we do not do what the CCP uh, does. It's pretty sad where we are. Anyway, listen, guys, I've spent enough time on this subject, I think. I hope that I've what you what happened to Ukraine matters to the United States of America, because all of the tyrants can see how weak Joe Biden is, how weak our European allies have become, how dependent they become on Russia and all of the dictators that want to uh, spread their communistic, their tyrannical style government, uh, they're having a major influence on the world. We've got to stop it. Quite frankly, we're the only nation that can stop it. And I hope that we do. Russia and Ukraine today, perhaps China and Taiwan, eventually they come for us. It's really that simple. It's either someone is going to spread freedom or someone is going to spread tyranny. Let's get back to spreading freedom. Until next time, guys, don't grow weary. Doing good. I want to make sure you follow me. Facebook, Carl Jackson Radio. Twitter and Parlor at Carl Jackson Show. And guys, I really need you on the podcast, SalemPodcastNetwork.com. A very easy place to find me uh, and to like and share. Uh, But also you can find me anywhere podcasts are found. Apple, Google, Spotify, uh, share from there. Rumble, share from there. YouTube, you can click the bell, get notifications. Uh, But everywhere you find the podcast, uh, I'd appreciate it. All right, guys, until next 
week. Don't grow, don't grow weary doing good. I intended to talk about other things today, uh, but tyranny is on the uh, on the march and freedom is stalled. And I just think that's more important. Uh, but uh, next week, we'll have much more to talk about. So until next time, don't grow weary doing good. God bless you.